وما هذه الحياة الدنيا إلا لهو ولعب وإن الدار الآخرة لهي الحيوان لو كانوا يعلمون towards the end of Surah Al-Ankabut Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this life of this world is nothing besides play and amusement and indeed the everlasting eternal real life is that of the hereafter if only but you know may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection in this world and the next so use what he has given you in order to build the hereafter when Allah has bestowed upon you favor, he has never done that in order for you to become arrogant or for you to develop a chip on your shoulder and to think for a moment that you are above others simply because Allah gave you wealth. Allah has favored others in different ways. You may have only one favor. You may be so poor that the only thing you have is wealth. That too, Allah can take it away at any time. How many a story have we heard of people who have dropped from riches to rags overnight? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not do that to us. We take a moment to pray for everyone. May Allah sustain us with beautiful sustenance. This is the month wherein we call out to Allah. My brothers, my sisters, remember there are a few moments left for this month of Ramadan. If you have not achieved the softening of your heart, it is the time to soften up your heart. If you have not yet forgiven those who have wronged you, it is a time to consider forgiving them. For indeed, Allah will forgive you as a result. Surah An-Nur, Allah says, forgive and embrace. Wouldn't you like, wouldn't they like Allah to forgive them? Indeed, Allah is most forgiving, most merciful. Remember, if you want Allah to forgive you, find it in your heart to forgive others. It is difficult at times. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the strength. Ameen. My brothers and sisters, this is the month that we achieve closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The book of Allah, the Quran, the revelation was sent to us in order to teach us how to lead our lives. Many people die without having understood the very manual that was sent to teach them how to have lived. That would be too late. Imagine Allah sends you a book and tells you, if you want to know how to live your life, this is the book. You need to read it. You need to understand it. You need to put it into practice and convey it to others, we will give you paradise as a result. But my brothers and sisters, how many people have died without having opened that manual or even reading why Allah created them? Will you not spare a moment? Will you not make a resolution during this month of the Quran known as the month of Ramadan that you will try your best to go through the verses of the Quran to be tutored to learn the meanings of these verses, to understand the plan of Allah directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's word and indeed use the scholars who are professionals to explain to you these beautiful verses of the Quran so that you can understand why Allah has created you. We would be at a loss if we allowed ourselves to die without knowing what true submission was without knowing who exactly our Lord was, how he described himself, how he wanted to be worshipped him and him alone, how he sent messengers in order for us to be taught how he wanted to be worshipped. It would be a great loss, my brothers and sisters, if you allowed your entire life to go by and you still did not understand the words of Allah, the most important book in existence is Kalamullah. It is the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that the Quran will protect you and Allah will protect the Quran. إِنَّا لَهُ لَحَافِظُونَ 
Indeed, we have revealed this revelation of the Qur'an and we will protect this revelation of the Qur'an. Many people think when they have memorized the Qur'an that they have protected it. In fact, the Qur'an protects them. When we are sad, the verses of the Qur'an make us happy. When we are at a loss, the verses of the Qur'an take us out of that loss and place us well within the profit and the gain that Allah has chosen for us. When we are unwell, the verses of the Qur'an take us out of the sickness and bring us to the cure that Allah has chosen for us. When we have a difficulty, the verses of the Qur'an bring about ease by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we have a crisis in our homes, the teachings of Allah through the verses of the Qur'an, that those are the verses that bring us out of the crisis and show us the solution. When we are going through any form of negativity, the verses of the Qur'an bring about the positivity. My brothers and sisters, when we are going through loss of any sort, hardship of any sort, when we are going through any form of issue, when we are just low and we are feeling very sad, the verses of the Qur'an bring about joy and happiness, solution. The verses of the Qur'an are those that inspire us to become closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What a great gift, my brothers and sisters. فِيهِ شِفَاءٌ لِلنَّاسِ In it, there are verses within which there is definitely cure for the people. And in a verse, Allah says, cure for that which is in the bosoms, for the sicknesses and the ailments of the hearts. When a person is inflicted with jealousy, it is the Qur'an that removes you from that into gratitude. When a person is inflicted with deception and bad character, the verses of the Qur'an will remove you from the bad character to the good character. Did you not hear when Aisha radiallahu anha was asked about the character of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she immediately said, كَانَ خُلُقُهُ Quran." His character was the Qur'an, an embodiment of the Qur'an. Does that not prove to us that your character shall be polished and improved by your connection with the Qur'an, your understanding of it, your practicing of the instructions therein and conveying it to others. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala soften our hearts towards the Qur'an. Allah nazzala ahsan al-hadithi kitaban mutashabihan mathani. Allah has indeed revealed the best of speech because it's His speech. It is the word of Allah, the book, the Qur'an. In it, there are verses that are repeated, Mathani. They are verses that are quite similar in meaning, diverse in instruction. They are verses that are repeated often, subhanAllah, just like we repeat Surah Al-Fatiha. Many times a day in our five daily prayers, Surah Al-Fatiha is a dua, a supplication within that surah to ask Allah for guidance. Because guidance is by far the most important gift that Allah could ever bestow upon you. If you have no food and drink, but you are rightly guided, you have achieved. And if you have all the food and drink on earth and everything material, but you don't have the guidance, you have actually lost everything. May Allah grant us ease. So Allah says, تَقَشَعِرُّ مِنْهُ جُنُودُ الَّذِينَ يَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ The skin of those who fear or who are conscious of their Lord happens to develop goosebumps as we were to say. So goosebumps develop when you hear the verses of Allah. Subhanallah, if you have Iman, if you have faith, if you have conviction in Allah, if you understand the verses of Allah, they have a greater impact upon you than anything else. You find yourself shedding tears. You find yourself, subhanallah, with the skin being that which develops goosebumps. La ilaha illallah. You've just heard a few verses and the tears began to roll. Allah mentions the eyes that are filled with the tears when they listen to the words of Allah. Those are the eyes of the true believers. 
وإذا سمعوا ما أنزل إلى الرسول ترى أعينهم تفيض من الدمع ترى أعينهم تفيض من الدمع مما عرفوا من الحق When they hear the verses of the Quran When they hear the verses that were revealed to the messenger you find their eyes fill up with tears subhanallah because they recognize the truth from their lord allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says those who say rabbana amanna faktubna ma'ash shahideen o oh, our lord we have believed so write our names from among those who bear witness they are the ones whom allah will grant success and paradise Allah mentions the filling of the eyes with tears when verses of the Quran are being recited and then the statement that I say, you say, we should all be saying, those before us have said and those after us who believe should be saying, Rabbana amanna faktubna ma'ash shahideen O Allah, we have believed. So write our names from among those who bear witness. Brothers and sisters, I seize this opportunity to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to write our names from among those who believe, to write our names from among those who bear witness, to write our names from among those who've been forgiven during this month of Ramadan, to write our names from among those who will be granted entry into paradise without reckoning simply and solely only through the mercy and blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ameen. My brother